salvation. But evil people and impostors will flourish. They will deceive others and will themselves be deceived. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who talk to you. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Jesus in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Okay, Father, we are praying and we pray in the name of Jesus. Scripture says all scriptures are God's breath. And we ask that the breath of God come alive again as we go over this passage exegetically. Then Jesus name. Amen. 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 Okay, so open your mind and open your hearts. I want to do what we call expositional constancy. I want to put light on this verse. Perhaps we have never read it before. Or we've read it as an obligation. I want us to pay close attention to the commands, to the tenses, to everything line upon line. Isaiah 28, verse 10. Who is it that will teach doctrine? He that is weak from breast and drunk from weak, that will teach a little year, a line upon line, a little year, a little day. The scripture is supposed to be taught precept upon precept. Not a man. That's why most people are. Men of God. Next time you're going to come to Nigeria, they will exclusively pastors. So if you are not a pastor here and you came, you are lucky. The next time you are coming, maybe the next. I think you came the next time. You are planning to But the next time you are coming to Nigeria, it's going to be exclusively pastors. You know why? Prophets, prophecy or the book of prophet was written to correct error. And the epistle to what is written to correct errors. And then you see why it's important for us to study the history, particularly as such a time as this. You see. So I'm going to bring light upon this scripture, line upon line. You will now say, wow, is it there? Was it written like that? Uh huh. In fact, and then you will have a question. If you can answer it, to be fine. But don't worry, that's why we are camping. No traffic. No, we are not in order to go home. We'll try to stick to the time, but at the same time, we will. In fact, by the time we are done tonight, you, you understand what I mean? Okay, so now, verse 9, verse 10. Let's check out Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. How you, however, follow my teachings. Now, this conversation started from verse 1. Welcome to Nigeria. <laughs> We understand. Yeah. <laughs> Is it right? Yeah. We understand. Maybe next time we're going to use this location. Once someone who is who can keep to their own. Okay? Alright. Let's look at it very well. You, however, I'm really I'm using ESV. ESV is I don't like KJV. Not that. Can you change this word? No. I know most of us like it in Why? Because every other version is not like that. Why? See, the word of God is supposed to be understood. The word of God is supposed to be clear. Okay? If any version do not change the text or the tenses, it is accepted. Because before KJV, they were about eight. Before KJV. They were about, we will show you on Predator tomorrow. They were about X version of the scripture. So, when you read PTV, do you really, really understand? The Bible is supposed to be a message. And in message, the communication must be clear. And in the message, the communication is not clear. How do you respond to the message? And that's why many people call, we do what we call lifting. We will get there in this verse now. Anyway, back to my text, because what I'm reading will be a little bit different from what you are reading from the same scripture. Or let me go to NPD. So I'll be close to NPD. Okay. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, 
manner of life, purpose, faith, and long suffering. Why did Paul write this thing? This was a conversation that started from verse 1. And verse 1 was talking about perilous times, difficult times. I won't go into those perilous times. It mentioned about 21 things that will happen at perilous times. And if I go by it, it will be depressing because it's everywhere now. Lovers of money, over lovers of self, hateful, boastful, no lovers of God. We were discussing that in the car today about lovers of money. Even the church we have today, lovers of money. So if you go by it, it will be depressing. So imagine Paul had spoken about 21 things before coming to this verse. Now, what he, 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 he listed the problems of perilous times. Now he wants to give solution. So let's forget about the problems. We don't, we don't depress ourselves. Let's go into the solution. And the solution one that Paul gave. He said, you have no my doctrine. You have no my manner of life. You have no my purpose. You have no my faith. You have no my non-suffering. You have no my love. You have no my perseverance. Hold on. Circle your Bible. Faith and circle love. Circle faith and circle love. These two things are the major ingredient of our faith. Hello? Can we see that? Can we talk around going around? Uh, exactly. This is serious time. Can we please, please? That's part of the rule, grand rule. No going around. Okay. This is necessary for those who are just coming here. We are not taking pictures, we are not doing anything else. Don't go around this. Okay, so let's circle these two things. Faith and love. See, I, I'll just say something that please, if you're just coming, you can do meditation later. You can do that later. Just say that. You can do that later. Yes. They will register later, we will be there back later, later, they do that later. Okay, that then says, she want, she want him to call me, if they see I hear me, if he know me, if I go, if Pamela, if Freddy. All right, there are two things I said to second there are what? There are what? Let's, I want to move back to God, please. All right, there are two ingredients I want us to circle there. Faith and love. and love. We can look for Galatians 5, 6. Galatians 5, 6. So he said, Galatians 5 6 says, But faith works by love. So we are saved, Ephesians 2 8, we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are God's workmanship created unto good works. Work is not the source of our faith. When I will, if you do that, then you lose it. Because it's in Islam that your work justifies you. In Christianity, work does not. But work, faith, our love is a proof of our faith. So we can therefore say that faith has been lost in Nigeria. Why? Because there is no love in Nigeria. We can therefore say that faith, love is not the source of our faith. But if you claim to have faith in God, it will be reflective in the way we show love to man. Example 1, Ephesians 1. Verses um, 16. Ever since I heard of your who can read for us? I need the verse. Ephesians 1. See, I'm going somewhere. This is this is what he said. And it's just introduction. Ephesians 1. 16. Five, verse 16 says. Oh this is not wait 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 from verse 15. Verse 15. Ephesians 1 15. Therefore, I also, after I had of your faith in the Lord 
and your love for all men. See? But I can't always do it like this. Faith in God, love to man. Faith in God, love to man. Anywhere that is not reflected, they don't serve Jesus there. Jesus came to him. So faith connects us to God. But you cannot claim you love God, you know God, and you don't reflect that love to your fellow man. So when that equation is not complete, there is no God there. For God is love. And whatever is not love is not God. See, tomorrow we'll study, we'll do a study on how to know what's of God and what's not of God. That's tomorrow. But today, just so Paul, after itemizing the problems of religious lives, he now wants to give Timothy the solution. And the first thing he said was to point Timothy to himself. You know why? Because at perilous times, we need fathers in faith, not, not fathers in the Lord. Because there's no father in the Lord in the Bible. At perilous times, at such a time as this, we need fathers in faith, not fathers in the Lord. Huh? Because there's no father in the Lord. Referring to your pastor in the Bible. True of us. True. But, then, but we call father in the Lord. Because fathers in faith are those who believe the scripture, those who obey the integrity of the scripture and those who stand on the supremacy of the scripture, not tradition. What is tradition? Tradition is a doctrinal belief that is claimed to be divine, but it's not in the Bible. So when the Father said, overweighs the revelation of the scripture, that is Father in the Lord. Because Father in the Lord came from Revelation 6 1. Children, obey your fathers in the Lord. Because uh, obey your parents in the Lord because you belong to the Lord. Oh, uh, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Isn't it? So, in the explanation of the scripture, by the way, let's even open that. Ephesians, uh, 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 Ephesians 6 1. I'm not going to skip it. So I can break the wall. Ephesians 6 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. The word in the Lord is a preposition. So that word in the Lord is a preposition that denotes your position. So children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. That's what it means. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. See, KJV is an 18th century English. So imagine Bwari today is speaking to Nigeria on the independence they're using 18th century English. You know how we say it's an Abiru? True or false? Okay, so if language had been metamorphosized, for example, can you say you are the ambassadors of God? Really? But we all know abroad, we have ambassadors. Nigeria is here. You are there. So that really, really, that ambassador does not fit into the use of ambassador of today. Because God is not far away while we are here. Ephesians 3 21. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above what we can ever ask for thing. Where? According to the power that was. In us. So God is not far from us. He's right in us, not even with us. That was in the gospel. Now it's in us if you are born again. So the use of ambassador of KDV does not fit into the language of today. So what do we do? Then we now call conceptualization. We bring that word of ambassador into the use of English today. Another one, Jesus is not considered like a robbery to the hip of God. The robbery of today means you carry gun, you go to bank. But well, that was now 18th century grammar. But right now, it's been a great part. That's why you've got to use other versions too. Use, but they must not change like the Bible does like change some of them. But it's, it's, it's like, and that's why I don't remember very well. It's expansive for me. I don't need to do it. Jay, oh, no, you go for it. Wow! That's impressive. So, the word there in Ephesians 6 is do you to pay your money? Because you belong to the Lord. So in that interaction, in that interaction, it started from chapter 5. So we're talking about husband, not a wife. Wife, obey oh, oh, no, your husband. Children, obey your father. They move to chapter 6. Then, father, don't obey your children. Then you move to servant, obey your master. Their master, don't cheat your servant. So in the interaction there from 5 to 6 is husband, wife, wife, husband, father, children, children, husband, and children, father. Master, employee, there is no pastor there. So that's why Father and the Lord revived to the bench of pastor. But we need fathers in faith. 
fathers in faith who uphold the integrity of the scripture, who do not elevate tradition above scripture because we are believers. Do we have fathers in faith today? They are very scarce. We have fathers in the Lord, mothers in the Lord, but not fathers in faith. By the way, when we say faith, the next thing that comes to your mind is the of faith. I have faith for my wife. Praise God. I have faith for the people of the womb. Praise God. I have faith for this. Really? The New Testament faith has one meaning. It's called pistis in Greek. Pistis. And it's the body of truth upon which the gospel sits. That is faith. Faith is not I'm believing my cow. I'm believing my house. Faith is the body of truth upon which the gospel sits. How do I know? Jude chapter 3. Let us therefore contend for the faith that was once delivered unto us. Why? Because men are corrupting their faith. What is he talking about there? It's not psychology of buying cars. That is wishful thinking, positive thinking by number one of the field. Positive thinking and positive living. Are we supposed to think positively? Sure. Then that is tomorrow. Today's foundation day. So when we say faith, fathers in faith are fathers who honor scripture, who respect scripture, who don't elevate their words above scripture. You know why today we all can have Bible today? Because of the Protestant Revolution. At one time, some people elevated tradition, called Catholic. Catholic elevates tradition above scripture. And they say it's not possible. Man shall be by faith. It has come back again in another form. The many things we do are elevated above scripture. We are believers. Believing in what? Believers of the Bible. So at troubled times, the first thing Paul gave to us was to point in. I think that rule too, no phone. The first thing Paul gave to Timothy. I think I should be punished for phone. I should be set on the app. So, um, Paul pointed Timothy to himself at trouble times. That was the first thing, the solution Paul gave Timothy. We need fathers in faith. Then we move on to verse 11, no, verse 12. Yes, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ, we what? Please, let's see it out. Uh-uh. Let's say that. All who desire to live a godly life, we do what? We suffer persecution. How many? Uh-huh. How many? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But today, when it is not sweet, it's a proof that God is not with you. Therefore, come to our church. We have three days fasting and prayer. And I'm story with Jay. But scripture says all. All who will live a godly life will suffer persecution. See, Jesus used the word blessed, and there was no time he connected blessed to his material words. Jesus, our perfect example, for a Christian because we belong to Jesus, never connected blessing to material wealth. The attitude, Matthew 5. That's why we bless God. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of God. Let me go to verse 10. He said, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for this is the kingdom of God. So Paul did not say what Jesus have not said. But you know our USP now, you know what they call USP? The USP is our unique selling point. If you are a manageable age and you have not married, my pastor is down. Once you lay hands on you, I lash you pay Baba solution. Now, now. So we are now interpreting God based on what is happening around us. So we are using experiences to interpret God. So who is the best pastor in town? The one that has the largest church. That's okay. And the largest crowd. Yes. But we can never use physical things to interpret God. And I'll prove it. Exodus 1. Exodus 3. 1 to 3. Or 1 to 3. Yeah. God appeared to Moses in a burning bush. I've read that story several times. 
we've had it in church, just put money in food. And Moses, in fact, so even started a theology with the food of that shoe, theology of no shoe. Recently, it was just an holy bag. But then, what was happening there? There was fire burning the bush, and the bush was not burning. That tells you who God is. There's what we call fire is combustion. There is no combustion without a source. Have you seen the combustion without source before? There is no combustion without either it is gas, kerosene, wood, paper, uh, dry grass. But here comes green grass and it's not burning. The source of God is not in this way. You, we can never use what is happening because I came to Canada doesn't mean I'm going to break it. See, that's it in Nigeria. Someone is going to our church of preaching. It's in Canada. Someone is from England. And so, we don't use external things to interpret God. Some people don't want to go to pasture because they think they have no God. Oh, what do I have to say? See, you have God. Some people can't preach the gospel because they don't have money. So we have allowed sweet talker, prosperity preachers to push us to the corner because we don't have money. We, we belong to God. We don't use what is happening around us. So they come to my church to teach us prayer. In my life, that's the best sermon I've ever had about prayer. Look at him. The way he explained it. Ah, by the time he was up, he has five children, all adopted. Five children. All adopted, he doesn't have to do And he teaches prayer. If it's Nigeria, he can't teach prayer. Eh? What does he have to say? He doesn't have to pray. See? This is Baba always said that. That's about us. Jesus raised him, right? But you see that. You see that again. You see living forever. See, there's nobody in life that does not have a problem. Nobody. Don't deceive yourself. The only person that doesn't have a problem is a man that is six feet below. And guess what? He escaped problem, but he put people in problem. Because they will do prayer. And they will cry. He has a problem of who to bury <laughs> So if husband die, he put wife in problem. If wife die, put husband in problem. If children die, put family in problem. If pastor die, put pepper in problem. If pepper die, put pastor in problem. Life is full of his own problems. So they tell you we are. I thought this kind of solution. I saw one advert today. Tomorrow is a Sunday is short of the service of open door. Open doors. Really? Really? Okay. I mean, just has opened. Have we forgotten the sovereign will of God? We have forgotten. I think we are not Christians again. We have allowed environment. If I'm able to get there, see, I'm just doing expositional studies of John. Oh, I'm, I'm, sorry, what I teach John. I'm teaching John every Saturday, so John is my brain. I teach John every Saturday for the past one and a half years, and we are seeing John chapter 12. Ah, two hours every Saturday for one and a half years, and we are seeing John chapter 12. Expanding John. You think Bible is, is done? Oh my God. Because we are made of the Spirit. And Jesus said, The word I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. There is no way a believer will be strong without the words of Jesus. Caught me, word of Jesus. Not just Sam. Today, Sam. Ah, somebody said I will get it out. Get what? Get what? Power for breaking. And mighty to overcome. Days of vengeance. Your enemies are in trouble. Kill them before they kill you. Stop them before they stop you. And you'll be stopping them. I see we are not believers again. We believe in the scripture. See, look at what Paul said. Paul said in this place we are reading now, 2 Timothy 3. He said, All, how many? All who live, all who desire to live godly life in Christ will suffer persecution. Persecutions and trials are integral part of our faith. Persecutions and trials are integral part of our faith. I'll repeat it again. Persecutions and trials are integral part of our faith. So if you are going through persecution right now or trials right now, it's not true, it's not a proof that God is not true. Because you cannot use money to define God. It's not in these five senses. Sense of smell, sense of touch, sense of taste, sense of sight, sense of feel. If your house is complete, it doesn't mean God is with you. And if it's not complete, it still doesn't mean God is not with you. God is with you if you are born again. 
you can never use suits to define God. The grass was burning. The fire was burning and grass was not consumed. In other words, it is in this our earthly realm that there must be combustion and there must be source. In God's realm, there can be combustion, there's no source. So it's not in this realm. God is not in this our five senses, sense, touch, smell. If not, how can he be here at the same time, be here at the same time? It's a spirit. How can he be here, being you, being you? And it's at the same time, people are in Canada now praying to the same God. We can never use our place around you to interpret God. When I knew that, that was why I left America. I was in America before, enjoying a very life. My friend and sister in America, I said, it's enough. I found Jesus. I found the bread of life. I found eternal life. Bread of life that truly satisfies. The water that truly quenches dryness. See, we are going to church to look for bread. No! Bread, bread, we'll get that on. I'll take tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. We go to church to look for bread. Daily bread. What the unbelievers look for. Jesus said that. Look at that. Look at what Jesus said in Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. So welcome on board to two set three uh, pillars and ground of truth. Mark chapter 4 verses are 16. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus speaking. He was talking about the parable of the sower. And he's saying that in verse 16. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. The ones who when they hear the word immediately Oh, sorry. Immediately receive it with joy. with joy, and then what again? And they have and they receive it with joy, and they have no good to themselves, but endure for a while. When, not if, when tribulations and persecution arise on account of the world, immediately fall away. They fall away. It is a if. It's a when because it's an integral part of our. There's no way we will know we're a believer if you are not right. Can confess I'm a Christian, a Christian. It God will try you. The word of God will try you. That's why the gold, that's when the golden laws will come out. Trials and temptation and persecution, they are integral part of our faith. Paul said it, Jesus said it many times. But our pastor said, if it is not well, you are under international course. Therefore, our next Sunday service is covenant give up breaking course. We we'll learn about national course. Tomorrow afternoon. We'll be a test that today. Test that today. Course. We're going to break what, what according to the scripture, because we are believers. Is there really anything called the national course? <coughs> break it out. Exodus, Ezekiel, John 6, John 9. We're going to bring everything out. But just be here. Be here with us. This is just an introduction. Because technically, what we want to study is First Timothy. But Second Timothy, anywhere we go in the world, we always do Second Timothy as our day one. So, in our sect, every man who wants to believe in Christ will suffer persecution. Then he moved to verse 13. But evil men and impostors will grow worse. Because, it's, because that's normal. Anytime there's, revo there's revolution or revelation of God's word, there will be perverse, perversion. Then, verse 14 is very important. Verse 14 now says, But you, you must continue in that which you have learned and be assured of, knowing from whom thou have learned them from. He said, he who must continue, Timothy must continue. There will always be reason to choose between tradition and truth. That's why this teaching is called the pillar and ground of truth. There will always be the reason logical reason, empirical reason, if we're going to have factual reason to pick tradition in the place of truth. But Paul said to Timothy, do not pick tradition over truth. You must continue to believe. You know why? Wherever there's an outburst of God's revelation, there will always be perversion. Acts chapter 20 and verse 29. Acts 20 Oh, there's no projector today, so I'll just describe the next thing I want to say. I will try to describe it very well. Acts chapter 20 and verse 29. See, this was Ephesians church, the church in Ephesus. 
after they had experienced an outburst of God's power and of God's word, Paul now said at um, Paul said when he was departing from that church, he said in verse 29, he said, he said in verse 29, this is the promise of the way, the way he left out. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know that after my departure, first wolves will come among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own self, we arise men speaking twisted things. What does it mean to twist? Witchcraft. What does it mean to twist? Witchcraft. So, somebody runs to the witch. Somebody, I will get there. Exodus 22. We will get there. Don't worry. We'll do that under the national clause. Paul said, perverse men will come into your midst, twisted, uh, he said, uh, verse 30, and from among you, so the enemy of the church is not in Moscow. The enemy of the church is not in the mosque. If an imam comes here, our mind is fixated as an imam. Don't expect him to say the truth. But if a bishop comes here now, your heart is open. That is where the enemy of the church is. Is in the church. First John chapter two, verse eighteen and nineteen. He said, and "We know the Antichrist has gone into the world, and they have come already." He said, "But they were with us, but they left us." So they know the Christian song, they know the Christian prayers, they know the Christian language, but they don't know the God of the Christian. They were there in the church. See? So he said, he said, he said, I'm from among you, on your own selves, we arise men speaking twisted things. What does it mean to twist? Which that? Any pastor that twisted, that twists the scripture is performing which that? Uh, 24 hours, turn around and uh, <laughs> if, if he's backed by twisting scripture, <laughs> because they are the most powerful power of Satan. That was what brought this word to where we are today. He even brought it to Jesus in Matthew 4. He said, in Matthew 3, 17, a boy said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Just the next five verses, he said, he has no son. Ah, the boy just said, he's God's son. So, let me give an example of a twisted son. If you want God to bless you, huh? if you want God to bless you, huh? and so say, oh, Papa, that is go on, Papa. Because it is not if you want God to bless you. Every Christian is blessed. Ephesians 1 3. Bless be God of our Father Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Who, who will? Is it who will? Who will? Who has blessed us? So what does it mean? Let's twist that. Let's open that word together. What does it mean? So whenever you see blessed there, the root word there is eulogy. Where the word eulogy guys comes from. It means to speak well. So whenever you see blessed, take it out. Say, speak well of God. For he's speaking well of us. And where is this speaking taking place? In heavenly places. So because of Christ, Ephesians 2 18, because of what Christ has done, we all have access to the Father. Through the Holy Spirit. So, sir, one God to bless you. No, Papa. One God to bless you. Go on, Papa. That was the same thing Satan did. That was the same thing Satan did for Adam and Eve that made them for. He brought the same thing to Jesus. Painting God as not a good God. God is good to us, whether you know it or you don't know it. How about when they said, if you are the son of God, and you know, he said that. Uh, Jump down from this point. So has been said concerning you. That's twisted scripture. Oh. Twisted scripture. Taking the scripture out of context to your advantage. We'll get there now in a couple of minutes now. It's witchcraft. <laughs> See, we are expecting a pastor on the altar with arms. We're gonna know that on Friday. How to know truth from lies. Truth and deception. Truth and non-truth. You know that. So I'm giving you things that are coming. So your head will be turning. We are expecting a pastor with horn. I'm, I'm, as I'm, yeah, I'm talking right now, I'm talking about the man. So if I reach, there are some witch pastors here who are also twisting scriptures. You are a witch if you twist the scripture. You are a witch if you twist the scripture. That is the character of Satan. He's the most powerful. Can you imagine you want to bring the entire world down? What will you bring? You bring, it's not even all demons. It came in himself and it's not come with anything but to twist the scripture. And that's what we do today for someone. We call it someone twisting scripture. Making scripture mean what it does not mean. That is witchcraft. 
So you're expecting a pastor to come with arms with a dirty clothes, forget your down suit a Roman product, twisting the scripture. That is witchcraft. It's Paul said, who has bewitched you Galatians? Why? He taught them grace, they left grace, they moved to law. Who taught them law? That is witchcraft. You have changed what has been written. Whoever changes the narrative of the scripture is a witch. I didn't say so. The scripture says so. I guess some people have witch pastors. And some are even witches themselves. And we'll kiss some witch anyway. <laughs> no, we're not so far, not a witch to that. <laughs> so, Moving forward, back to our Timothy. Moving forward, back to our Timothy because uh, this all I've just said are preambles in the same Timothy. In I said, you Timothy must continue. You Timothy must do what? Must continue to believe. You must continue. Why? Because there will be reason why you won't, you won't want to continue. Your friends will be doing it. It's going to be the game thing. Every church today now, see, come. Last year I came to Nigeria in October. My brother, my younger brother saw, you know, because of what I do, uh, Mr. Israel knows me. Uh, brother, brother, brother knows me. Uh, some people know me because of what I do. I have a, a lot of platform where I speak, you know. So my younger brother came to pick me at the airport last year. I said, hey, I can't look for 20 million. I said, why? He said, once you bring 20 million, hmm? we'll rent a good hall somewhere in Lagos. Get instrumentalists. Don't mind if they sing in club on Monday. But make sure they are good and get someone that can sing praise worship. Say we go blow. And it's true, we go blow. We go blow. <laughs> we go blow. Just get good all basses or good lightning. Get good guys that can play the dog gun and that can play music. We go blow. He told me we go blow. I said, hey, I know we go blow for real. It's true. Yeah, so there'll be a reason why you do that. Paul said, I am he said that ahead of us. We must continue. Remain in the truth. There will be reason to do church for business. We're going to get to a particular point now that you yourself will be dropping. Let me talk about a man called Gary Sokari Braid. You may not have heard of him before because you won't even hear of him. Gary Sokari Braid, we don't have to get to him tomorrow, we'll see, was historically was the first healing minister in Nigeria. Nigeria. Around 19, between 1901 and 1920. We don't know him today, and I'll tell you why we don't know him. When the missionary brought the gospel, they meant good, but they are partly, they are part to the problem we have now, but they meant good. But it was a good problem. When the missionaries came to Nigeria, ah, to you, whether it's good to me, I'm born here. When the missionaries came to Nigeria, okay, they brought simple gospel. But when they came, they saw Ujuba, they saw Ifa, they saw a lot of idolatry. Ah. So they don't want anything idolatry in their church at all because of what they were saying. So they were preaching the gospel. The gospel was effective, was powerful. This is, you can go and go and check him out. The gospel was powerful and effective. People were coming to the missionaries, they were giving, they, they can't give a light to Christ. They were receiving Christ. Then, they began to sing the Bible. Then Jesus, they asked me to believe. He was doing miracle. Can't you believe in a miracle? The priests, the missionaries were afraid. Because once we start going to that window, we don't know how to stop it. And because of these things we are seeing, ah, I said, no, 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 just hear us one go. Ah, when we are singing European hymn, we want to sing, uh, like you know, we want to sing our song. But, but to the missionaries, the same tune they were hearing at Odubo is the same tune they want to bring to church. This, uh, 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 to them, anything Afrocentric is diabolical. But they too forgot that in Acts 2, all tribes receive the Spirit. So they forgot that scriptural interpretation is always tainted by cultural background. But just, just make sure you don't change the truth. But we will blame them too. They meant idolatry. So that control makes this to carry to say we are going so they broke out so now they broke out they went to pray so miracle happens not because man is powerful miracle happens because god answered prayers mm -hmm. james chapter 5 verse 14 or so he said is anyone sick let him call for the elders elders are priest vestry or bishop or 
Superintendent or overseer. Let them pray for him. He didn't say let them heal him. Pray. So if you pray and miracle happens, it's not because of power. It's because God answers prayers. If any man can win miracle, it's a you. That's why you can't say tomorrow service is miracle service. How are you sure? How are you sure? First Corinthians chapter 12, 11. 12, 11. He said, all these gifts God distributed as in God. We use it. Can I we God? Hebrews, Hebrews 2 4. God does those miracles as He will. I cannot will God. I cannot will Him. I can only align to His will. See? So if I say that Sunday service is miracle service, it's a lie. How are you sure? Are you God? You say, I'm acting in faith. Let me tell you something. Every miracle that happened in Acts, for example, the one in Acts 14 8, Paul at Mistra was praying, was preaching. And the man received had faith to be healed, right? He had faith to be healed, right? Isn't it? Where does faith come from? Okay. Hebrews, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes from? Yeah. Where is it from? Yeah. The word of God is the vehicle that brings the faith from God. So even the faith that you receive have is a function of God. Ephesians 6. Let's prove it. I like proving I speak. I always do that in my Ephesians 6, chapter 24. Numbers 24. Ephesians 6, chapter 24. 23, Ephesians 6, 23. Peace be to you, brothers, and love with faith from God. Peace be to you, brothers, and the love with faith from where? God. God. Aha. So I have faith. It's my faith. It's God. Everything, all good and perfect comes from God. No one receive anything. Don't say, except the Lord, man prays. Miracle happen because man prays and God can support because the man is powerful. So you run after me, they will make you shall sign. Sign and say, oh, then, that be it. That woman that came to our conference in Toronto, I did not know you were going to pray. So I cannot say I'm powerful. She just, oh, from Pernakia, which card? Then she prayed to God, and God answered prayers. Not because Paul is powerful. See, if any man prays to God, we all have access to God. Go Ephesians 2.18. We, we all have access to God. See, pastors don't like teaching this because it's like they're taking the power of their hands. Because power, pastor wants to stand, and I'm, I'm going to get there. This is Sukari brain now. Let's, let me go back to Sukari brain. Gary Sukari brain was the first illuminate minister in Nigeria. And when that thing happened, they broke out on the missionaries. So, where well, that was the beginning of our problem. They had zeal, they prayed. In fact, the, the missionary was talking about Sokari in England and white men don't lie. He said there's nobody Sokari prayed for that does not receive miracles. They were saying that in England and white men don't tell lies. It's their character, they don't tell lies. He said there's nobody he prays for that does not receive miracles. But what happened? They prayed, God answered, miracle happened, but no doctrinal truths, no knowledge. So they don't know anything about the Bible. It got to a point. He was calling himself the Elijah that is to come. So he began to take scripture out of context. I am the Elijah that is to come. When he's going on the street, because people were coming up by him, choir will wear room and they'll be beating drum. You're going to hear them. Where did you get it from? Because that's what happens to one day when on this moving. So what was happening in society, he brought it to the church. That was the beginning of syncretism. What is syncretism? Syncretism is amalgamation. Of culture and religion. What did Jesus say? Mark 7 13. The tradition of men makes the word of God of no effect. What is the meaning of no effect? Impotent, void, tradition of men. But they didn't know. But you know what? That is not an excuse. They didn't know. And guess what? Despite their doctrinal flaws, miracles were still happening and cloud was still happening. They Today now, pastor goes around with the the same to that guy does. He too began to wear the robe of uh, uh, American priest. He began to wear collar. So they didn't even know why they wear collar. They didn't even know why they wear collar. They think collar means anointing. <laughs> See, if you are a pastor, and you need to wear clothes, or someone to know that you are a pastor, you are not fit to be a pastor. Let your light so shine before men that men will see your good works and give glory to your father, which is in not see your collar. Today, there's a, a, a Wolis fan. Even this year, he wears a fan now. When he cast 
They don't know why you do that. See? Because they began to, they're taught, they want to be like missionaries. They, don't, they want to be like them. But the missionaries will be wearing uniform because it's cheaper to wear uniform. And it's going to distinguish them from the crowd. So the colonial master can identify them. There's nothing and nothing about uniform. But they didn't know and they didn't ask. So they began to wear uniform. They began to do practices that they don't understand. That was the beginning of our problems. It moved to the lab to us in the 60s. It moved to CCC in the, in, in the 30s. So it began to come like that. Till even Kumi is one of them, because each one he brought his nature into it. See, they, they, they had good intention. They want to work for God. That was the crisis. But, but, but there is no doctrinal truth. And that was what happened to Sakari. You know what happened to Sakari at the end? I mentioned yesterday that I don't even know him. He died and nobody knows where he was buried. Because he was part of all jailed, because, because he does not know doctrinal truth. He was preaching against the tobacco and at all. To I mean, was alcohol in the scripture? I mean, we talk about that later. He was, he, he, he was speaking against, preaching against alcohol. Is that the gospel? Is that the gospel? Don't be drunk is the fruit of the gospel. It's not the substance of the gospel. Okay? And now the colonial master's business was furious. So he was closing their business. So they jailed him. <laughs> and that thing could not save him. He was jailed for two years. And after that, he was released. He was sick, sick, and he died. He died, nobody knew where he was buried. I think it's good they didn't know where he was buried. But now they're like worshiping him, like they're worshiping him, I don't know, like. They're going to be going to his graveyard to pray. And that's necromancy, consulting the dead. That is not scriptural. That's not scriptural. That's not what our Bible said. That's necromancy. So what happened to Sakari? He later died. And um, he was buried. And nobody knows where he was buried. Now, what is the lesson here? What is the lesson here? In verse 14, Paul said to Timothy, you must continue to, but you must continue in the things you have been taught and learned and, uh, 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 and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned it. Now, there are two things I want to bring up from this verse 14. The consequence even though it's a choice to believe the scripture, he never said you, he said you should, it's about choice. I can decide to go by tradition and forget scripture. Even though it's a choice, but the consequences of not believing the scripture is not negotiable. And I'll give you two consequences. Consequence one, Matthew 7 21. Matthew 7, 21. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons? Say that. Okay, let's start again. Many, many, many will say, Lord, Lord, do we, do we not prophesy in your name? Or cast out yeah. and do many mighty works, yeah. and then we like to claim unto them. I never knew you. Depart from me, you work as of iniquity or lawlessness. Even though it's a choice to continue to believe the scripture, but the consequences is not a choice. I know what. Any work we do for the Lord in the name of the Lord, but not in the way the Lord has declared in the scripture, is a waste of time. Again, any work we do for the Lord in the name of the Lord, but not as revealed in the scripture, is a waste of time. Genesis 22, 1 and 2. God said to Abraham, bring Isaac, your only son. Does God lack mathematics? Was Isaac the only son? No. Because that was a waste of time. It does not count. God does not see it. God does not see it. Any work we do for the Lord, in the name of the Lord, that is against the word of the Lord, is a waste of time. 
waste all time. They prayed in his name. They cast out that demon in his name. But he never knew. He didn't say you once came and you were kind. He said, I never knew you. In other words, from day one, it was all wastes. I don't want to do something that is going to be wasted. That's why we must learn the doctrinal truth about pastoring. Particularly as such as an artist. But by the way, it would have been so good if the consequence was on the pastor alone. Ah, that would be good. That is the only way I've brought up to hell. But the consequence is on the generation. Verse 15. Second Timothy verse 15. Look at Second Timothy verse 15. And from, he said, continue in the things which you have learned and be assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Knowing from where? Same in verse 14, of whom you have learned them. So how was Timothy guided doctrinally? Second Timothy 1, 6 or 1, 5, 1, 5. From your grandmother, Eunice, and your mother, Lois, see? Truth, Christianity is passed from one generation to another is attending. Christianity is passed from one generation to another. That's why we don't need men of we don't need fathers in the Lord right now. We need fathers in faith. If you want to know what I'm talking about, ask this guy's age group about the sensuality of our faith. I mean between 20 and 35. You realize that we are not Christian again in Nigeria. They say body wants to stand Nigeria. And that's what the Christian country again is gone. We don't even know what it means to be a Christian again. All we know is, I will get there. Oh, we will get to it. It will happen. What will happen? You will get there. Get to it. It will happen. Your door will open. Your breakthrough will come. Uh, power must change hands. That's like I said. Oh, no, me now, now. That's what we know. And that is not Christianity. That's not what we pass to the next generation. Their movement. It is power that will change their hands. Yeah. Every month. Ah, yeah. In between months, it changes back to the devil and then go back to the You will get it. You will get it. I mean, is it here? Oh, I'll see this tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. We'll get the difference tomorrow morning. Yeah, I'm looking at my time. So I'm bringing it home now because this part, this last part is like corporate. It's, it's the last part that really brings everything into perspective. So Christianity is passed from hand to hand, from generation to generation. So if you decide to twist scripture, the consequence is not on you, it's on the generation yet unborn. And that is a hard cry of God. That is a hard cry. That was why God allowed them to kill witches in Exodus. Oh, you see, Exodus, Exodus 22, they allowed them to kill witches because it's better you destroy that seed, don't let it spread. Now, heresy, deception, and falsehood is spreading. If you sample all these young people between 20 and 30, to ask them what, what really it is to be a Christian, it's all gone. So that's why the effect of not believing in the, in the scripture is not just on us, it's on generation to generation. Now, the last one, the last point, where, <laughs> oh God, help me to explain this. In verse 15, and I said, And that from a child you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God will be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. All scripture is given by God's inspiration. See, the men that wrote scripture were not inspired. If they were inspired, Peter would write more than two books. It is the word of God that is inspired. And that is why that word of God that is inspired is called the breath of God. This word of God is a very breath of God. That word inspiration means breath. In Genesis 2 7, God made man and he breathed into him. Breath of life. It's that same breath that turned the rubbish because Adam was made out of dust. And that is rubbish, trash. But the breath of God made a treasure out of his trash. For any believer to be transformed, be ye transformed by the renewal of the mind, it's, we have to be fixed on the breath of God. Now let me propose something to you. Let me read it for you again. In this second Timothy chapter 3, this is going to open your mind today and it's going to set the foundation for all we want to do here. 
today till Saturday. Okay. All scriptures is given by the inspiration of God. What is the meaning of inspiration? The word inspiration means the breath of God. And the person that explained that breath of God properly is Peter. First Peter, second Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20. That we open it up for us. Okay. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Knowing this, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. What is the meaning of that interpretation? I told you KJB is an old English. So I have a dictionary here, a Bible dictionary, and open the meaning of interpretation. The word interpretation means to loose or unloose. To loose or unloose. So we can therefore say all scripture are give at all. He said they can therefore say that. Knowing this that the first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private loose name or loose. And to explain that, we go to John chapter 10, verse 35. Look at what John said, what Jesus said. In John 10, 35. You see, just I'm bringing something home now. You see where we must get back to the joint group. John 10, 35. You said the scripture cannot be broken. John 10, 35. If he call them God, or to whom the, the word of God came, and all scripture cannot be broken. What does it mean of broken? It means to lose. So there is a rope tying the entire scripture as one. You see, this Bible is one book. And that rope is for the neck of Jesus. Psalm 119, verse 160. He said, the sum total of your word is truth. The sum total of your word is truth. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the entire scripture is for Christ. It's explained with Christ. So you look at what Jesus said in uh, John 5, 39. John 5, 39. I'm rushing, so just, if you're writing, write, and um, just, John 5, 39. Mm -hmm. it says, Who said the scripture? Okay, go ahead. It says, you diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These what? are the scriptures that testify about me. You search the scripture, but you think in me they have eternal life, but the scripture testify about me. The scripture is all about Christ. Christ is the explanation and the interpretation of the scripture. Once you take Christ out of the scripture, what you have is just tradition. Christ is the interpretation and the explanation of the scripture. The moment you take Christ away out of the scripture, look at what he said in that same place. Look at verse 46. He said in verse 40, Do not think that I shall accuse you of the Father. This is not another. Okay. Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. This there is one who accuses you, Moses, whom you trust. If you believe Moses, you will have believed me, for he wrote about me. Ah, but Ale Exodus. There's a program, the night of Exodus. So the three pages. But Jesus said Moses wrote about him. Everything Moses wrote is not about us. It's not a church program. It's about Christ. It's all prophecy ah, about the blood of the. Ah, I wish I have time. Oh, oh. Exodus 14, Exodus 12, the Passover <laughs> land. I think I have time. See, everything Moses wrote, for example, who parted the Red Sea? Who parted the Red Sea? The Lord parted the Red Sea, not God. The Lord parted the Red Sea, it's God. But Scripture says, Exodus 14, 13, the Lord parted the Red Sea. The Lord of the Old Testament is the Jesus of the New Testament. The Lord of the Old Testament is the Jesus of the New Testament. Let me prove it to you. The Lord parted the Red Sea. In Acts 9, 5, Jesus came to Paul. So, so, why are you persecuting me? He said, why are you Lord? Did Jesus say, stop that. I'm not Lord. He said, I am Jesus. Whom thou persecuted. The Lord of the Old Testament is the Jesus of the New Testament. In John chapter 20, the last part, and verse 26 to 28, Thomas bowed down. Oh, after seeing evidence, he said, my Lord and my God. Did he say, stop that? That's me. No. He never said, stop that, Thomas. That's to me. That was when Jude was writing his word. In Jude, verse 5, 
He said, Jesus parted the Red Sea. King James didn't say it, but no other versions. NIV said that. ESV said that. Uh, NLT said that. Jesus parted the Red Sea. The entire Bible is called Jesus' book. It's a Christocentric book. Our explanation of the scripture out of Christ is tradition, nonsense, it's twisted. So we must give the Bible Jesus' explanation and Jesus' interpretation. That's what we're going to do tomorrow morning. So what about uh, Luke 24? Luke 24 on the way to a miles. Let's go to Luke 24. On the way to a miles, see, my time is fast, man, so I want to. Give you five minutes. Give you five minutes, okay. <laughs> on the way to a miles. On the way to a miles, Luke 24 verses. Uh, uh, okay, let's do 25. Luke 24, verse 25. It says, He said to them, How foolish you are. Wait, 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 that word is so powerful. Do you know this is the resurrected Jesus? Let me expand it. This is the resurrected Jesus. You can imagine Jesus just came back from resurrection with the resurrection power. After he just defeated death, he has all the power. In Matthew 28 and 28, 20, he said, oh, 28, 18, all powers in heaven and on earth have been given unto me. So the resurrected Christ has all power. Look at the first word he said. Oh, foolish. Without power, he said, oh, foolish. Ah, why am I they foolish? I want to know. When I read this place, I want to know why the resurrected Christ will call someone foolish. Why am I they foolish? And slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Ought not that ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter his glory? And beginning, which book is beginning? Genesis. 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 So he went to Genesis to began to flip. See, when you see Cain and Abel, Cain offered plant and Christ, Abel offered animal sacrifice. That's the type of Christ. Go to Adam and go to Genesis. Uh, Abraham, he offered Isaac, and when he wanted to offer Isaac, and God brought the lamb. See, he brought Jesus, lamb of God. You go to Exodus, you see the Passover lamb, you put the blood on your lintel and on your post. That is cross, that is Christ. You keep moving like that and keep quoting the scripture. You go to Psalm, you see Christ. You go to Prophet, you see Christ. And this is what the scripture are saying. The rock, the rock. The rock. Uh-huh. First Corinthians yeah. 10 said that this is Christ. So if you don't see Christ in all this, you just say, you are. But when we see our own, our own by what we see, we see what you want to claim. We see prosperity, what you claim. We see blessing, what you claim. Are there blessings in the scriptures? Yes, we'll get there, but you know, <sighs> introduction is so deep, you know. So he said, I, I, all not Christ somebody said, I'm beginning from Moses. He said that today. What, which, how many books did Moses write? Five. Ben the talk. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And from length, he went to prophet. He spoke about prophet today. Major prophet, minor prophet. Then he went to all the scriptures and all these things concerning himself. Yes. Was it concerning him? Paul is not in the scripture. I don't go to the Bible to find myself. You go to the Bible to find Christ. When you see Christ, you see yourself. You see, Peter's name was changed from Peter to Rock when he found Christ. This is the Christ. You are the Messiah. This is the revelation of Christ. Christ has changed himself. But we are going to the Bible to find my blessing. My prosperity, my success. You are not there. It's the book of Christ. When you find Christ, you will find yourself. So we already taught this. We already taught this in our churches. That was what Sokal did not know. They went into it, they can pray miracle apple, but no content. They went into self-destruct. They became Jew. They became the first papa. The first Jew. And he went into self-destruct. He died, nobody knew when he died. And God used him. Miracle happened. But there was no content. So he began to call himself the Elijah that is to come. Really? Like Elijah. That's heresy. That is way too much. So I'm beginning from Moses all about himself. Now look at verse 47 in the same place. Verse 40. And then he said, then, okay. So I want, I'm going to say now, may God open your understanding. What happens is that seek first the kingdom of God and all others in that time. We are in the spirit. That's what I love in Bible study. We're going to see that tomorrow afternoon. What it means to be to see the kingdom and all other things. You see, I don't want to start that now because you see, I'm going to take another 10 minutes to explain that. Verse 46, verse 45, and he opened their understanding. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will preach upon us today through the pages of the scripture and open our understanding. Amen. Not because we want to pass jam on our head. So he opened their understanding that they may comprehend the scriptures. Because when you understand the scripture, you will understand yourself. 
when you understand the scripture, you will know who you are. He opened their eyes up, up to understand the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it, it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, and, 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 and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem and all of the world. Behold, I send my prophet, I want to see the place I want to see. Verse 44. Then he said to them, These are the words I spoke to you. They said, Okay, I've, I've seen it. These are the words I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, written in the laws of Moses and prophet and psalm concerning me. He said, not Paul. He said, all things in the laws of Moses, five. Yes. Prophet, minor and major. Psalms, all the poetry. All the poetry. Concerning who? Psalm is not for you. It's my psalm, Psalm 16. <laughs> I claim it. Psalm 16 is not for you. It's a message about Christ. When we see Christ in them, then Christ will bring ourselves to us. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop with this. Uh, with this. Uh, <laughs> let me stop here, sir. Give me extra five minutes. I think we are supposed to talk. Uh, this, this is very important. And it's going to. Okay, I'm going to do this. The resurrected Christ. Okay, we we'll stop that. So let me just stop with one thought, and we'll stop there for today. Acts chapter 19. This is going to be the good night. So, we'll stop. Acts chapter 19. That is, uh, I mean, Act 19. Yeah, this is where I'm going to stop. And this is going to be, it's going to open our hearts. Uh, it's going to be like the, the camp of all I've said. Psalm 19. I know Psalm 19. Act 19. Act 19 began with Paul pray, pray, praying for some people, 12 of them, they received the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, in that Act 19 verses, uh, I want to jump, or verses 8. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning, persuading, concerning all the kingdom of God. But when some had, when some had him and did not believe, he sp but spoke evil of the way before the multitude. Departing now, verse 10. And this continued for how many times? Two years. Two years. So that all who dwelt in Asia had the word of the Lord. They had what? The word of the Lord. They had what? So what was the content of Paul's teaching? Please, let's, let's, let's do some math. What was the content of Paul's teaching? The word of the Lord. Okay, so what was the, what was the effect? We know the content. The effect, verse 19, the effect, verse 19. And also many of those who had practiced magic brought their book to be burned in the sight of all. And they counted up the volumes of them and in total 50,000 pieces of silver. See, all that practiced magic, it wasn't the divine service. What was the content of the message? Word of God. What was the effect? They dropped their magical magic. book. They dropped their magical book. See, how long did he preach the word? Two years. Two years. Historians said he preached this word an average of five hours per day. So, in verse 20, now said, So mightily grew the word. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. So, what grew mightily? The word of the Lord. What was the effect? Magic people dropped their charm. Because of the word of the Lord. How long was it preaching the word of God? <laughs> Two years. Historians said about five hours per day. So let's put it this way: five hours per day times um, until sixty-five days. That's a one thousand eight hundred. So one thousand eight hundred hours times two, three thousand six hundred hours. Divide that by two hours teaching per week, one on Wednesday, one on on, on, on Sunday. That is thirty-four years of sermon crushed in two years. That's what we're going to do. Part of a grand rule, don't clap. Meditate upon the word that you have heard. We are not here to mix words. We are not here to say to you, 
that I'm going to give you unction for an unction. No. No. 